good morning students nice to be with you on this social media teaching of this poem the spider and the fly now we'll see the learning outcomes of this poem to recite the poem with proper pronunciation pass stress and intonation to appreciate the poetic devices or the literary devices like metaphor simile and personification learning outcomes 903 and 922 are those things which we are going to learn through this poem can you see this picture what do you see in this picture what story are you reminded of on seeing this picture yeah it is a famous story about a crow and a fox what did the fox do in this story yes the fox praised or complimented the crow falsely in order to get the vada which the crow was holding in its mouth or at its beak and how did the fox get the vada from the crow in this story but the fox was not really appreciating or praising the crow it used the flattery as a tool or a weapon or a device or means to cheat the crow flatter means praising someone insincerely or falsely that is praising but not truly the fox said hi crow you sing nicely and you have a wonderful voice and i always love to listen to your song the crow believing the words of the fox nodded its head and opened its mouth and said oh yes i'll sing now and it cried ka 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 already the vada in its mouth fell down when it opened its mouth to sing thus the fox picked up the vada and fell down and ran away now we can see a few facts about spider spiders are not insects they have been around for a very long time spiders have eight legs some spiders have eight eyes spiders do not have noses or ears spiders make webs with silk silk spiders catch insects in their web Baby spiders are called spiderlings. Spiders are not insects, they are arachnids. They have eight legs, they have two body parts. Spiders do not have antennae. Spiders webs are made of silk. Spiders make silk to capture their prey. Most spiders are harmless. Some spiders like the black widow can harm humans because of their venom what you are going to learn through this video is a poem about a spider and a fly the poem is in the form of a fable fable means a story and it tells how a spider uses flattery or false praising like the fox as a device or means to trap an innocent fly as its prey prey means victim or something to be killed shall we learn this poem about the spider and the fly children okay good before going to learn the poem let me introduce the author to you it is written by mary botham howard she was an english poet she was born at colford in gloucestershire she was educated at home and read widely she commenced writing verses at a very young age together with her husband william howard she wrote over 180 books the story tells of a cunning spider who ensures a fly through the use of flattery the poem teaches children to be wary against those who use flattery and charm to disguise their true evil intentions children in this session we are going to learn only the first three stanzas of the poem 
So let me read only the first three stanzas of the poem. Children, observe me carefully to learn the pronunciation, stress, tone and intonation so that you can recite this poem later with correct pronunciation, stress and intonation. The spider and the fly. Will you walk into my parlor? said the spider to the fly. It's the prettiest little parlor that ever you did spy. The way into my parlor is up a winding stair. And I have many curious things to show when you are there. Oh no no said the little fly to ask me is in vain. For who goes up your winding stair can never come down again. Now we'll go to the second stanza. I'm sure you must be weary dear with soaring up so high. Will you rest upon my little bed? Said the spider to the fly. There are pretty curtains drawn around the sheets of fine and thin. And if you like to rest a while, I'll snugly tuck you in. Oh no, no, said the little fly, for I've often heard it said, They never, never wake again who sleep upon your bed. Now we'll go to the third stanza. Said the cunning spider to the fly, Dear friend, what shall I do to prove the warm affection? I've always felt for you. I have within my pantry good store of all that's nice. I'm sure you're very welcome. Will you please to take a slice? Oh no, no, said the little fly. Kind sir, that cannot be. I've heard what's in your pantry. And I do not wish to see. Now to the Pope. Before knowing the poem, shall we learn some of the new words in the poem so that you can understand the poem in a better way. Glossary, parlor, a tidy room in a house used for entertaining guests, sitting room or drawing room or front room in a house. You can see a parlor in this picture. Pretty. Beautiful or attractive or cute. The word prettiest is the superlative form. Pretty, prettier and prettiest. Winding. The twisting moment or course. Stars. Steps. Staircase. Curious. Interesting or attractive or good looking or nice. Vain. Useless or ineffective or worthless, weary, very tired or sleepy or exhausted or worn out. Antonym of weary is energetic and fresh. See the girl, she is very tired. One more picture, see him, he is also very tired. Soaring, racing high or increasing rapidly. Curtain, screen or drape or cloth or other cloth like material suspended, drawn, pulled, snugly, comfortable, warm and cozy manner, tuck, cover or fold, put inert, wake, get up or rouse from sleep, cunning, deceitful, wicked, deceiving, lying or bad, a storeroom or cupboard which contains food items and beverages or drinks. See the pantry. Delicate or faint and mysterious. How delicate it is. Flattering to praise or compliment insincerely. See how it is praising. Counselor. A person who advises. See the person is advising. Flattery is the technique or the tactics used in this poem. In this poem, the cunning spider makes an attempt to trap the simple or naive or innocent fly 
with its devious, deceiving or false words. Trap means to catch. The spider uses flattery to convince and trick the fly. It makes promises of showing pretty things, providing a comfortable bed for stay or resting place. Predominant tone of the poem is flattery. It also promises to provide good or delicious food from its pantry, that is from the storehouse. Let us see what happens to the fly. Let us begin with the first stanza of the poem and understand it. The spider and the fly. Will you walk into my parlor? said the spider to the fly. It's the prettiest little parlor that ever you did spy. The way into my parlor is up a winding stack. And I have many curious things to show when you are there. Oh no, no, said the little fly to ask me a sin why. For who goes up, your winding star can never come down again. In this first stanza, the spider invites the fly to its parlor by talking about its parlor. Then he promises to show many interesting things and provides a comfortable stay and delicious food when the fly comes to its parlor. But the fly refuses to accept the invitation by saying that whosoever goes there never returns down from the parlor. Now we'll see the first line. Will you walk into my parlor, said the spider to the fly. Second line, it's the prettiest little parlor that ever you did spy. In the first line, the spider asked something to the fly. What did the spider ask the fly? It asked whether the fly would walk into the spider's parlor. That is the spider cordially invites the fly to come to his parlor that is to his living room where he entertains his guests. In the second line, what does the spider say about the parlor? The spider says that the parlor of his house is so cute, beautiful and attractive. And it makes an attempt to tempt the fly by saying the fly might not have seen such beautiful things earlier. The way into my parlor is up a winding star. And I have many curious things to show when you are there. Here, the spider explains how to reach his parlor, that is how to go into his parlor. To reach his parlor, the fly has to take the winding staircase or steps. He explains that the winding staircase will be in a zigzag manner. Then the spider tries to entrap the fly by arousing his curiosity of seeing beautiful things. The spider says that has many beautiful and cute things to show him when the fly comes the last light. Oh no no said the little fly to ask me as in vain. For who goes up your winding star can never come down again. Immediately in these lines, the fly gives a smart reply to the spider for its invitation. Here we can see that to a certain extent, the fly has an understanding of the cunning nature of the spider, the danger of going into his parlor. What was the reply or an answer given by the fly? He refuses or dismisses the invitation given by the spider stating that whosoever goes to his parlor taking the winding stars is never coming back or coming down. That means missing. So it replies that it is useless or waste to ask the fly to come to the spider's parlor. In the stanza one, the spider does its best to entice the fly into its parlor 
with promise of pretty things to see. He refuses and says it will never visit because it knows whoever goes there never seen again. We'll go to the second stanza. I am sure you must be weary dear with soaring up so high. Will you rest upon my little bed said the spider to the fly. There are pretty curtains drawn around the sheets of fine and thin. And if you like to rest a while, I'll snugly tuck you in. Oh, no, no, said the little fly, for I've often heard it said. They never, never wake again who sleep upon your bed. We'll see the first line. I'm sure you must be weary, dear, with soaring up so high. See, it is flying up and up. So, it's telling since you are flying up and up, you will be feeling so tired. In the first answer, he invited him to the parlor, but he did not come and refused his invitation. In the second stanza, the witty or amusing dialogue between the spider and the fly continues. The spider makes further attempts to trap the fly with the promise of providing a comfortable stay for the weary and tired fly. Why is the fly tired? As in the words of the spider, the fly is tired as the fly is soaring or rising so high when flying. Will you rest upon my little bed? said the spider to the fly. The spider asked the fly whether he would like to rest, take rest on his bed. The spider invites the fly to his bedroom. There are pretty curtains drawn around the sheets of fine and thin. In order to make the fly accept the offer, he tempts the fly further by talking about the comforts. The spider says that the sleeping place has nice screen, clothes and sheets to lie on, which are very fine and thin. And if you like to rest a while, I'll snugly tuck you in. He also promises to make him comfortable by tucking or covering him with clothes. Children, when you are tired and you find a comfortable bed, how will you feel? You feel like sleeping on it, isn't it children? Now, let us see what the fly is going to do. Oh, no, no, said the little fly, for I've often heard it said. They never, never wake again who sleep upon your bed. Though the spider seems to use different tactics and appears to be harmless and tries to maintain intimacy or closeness with the fly, the spider could not succeed in making the fly to accept the invitation. The fly refused to go onto his bed, saying that the fly slept upon the spider's bed, never got up from their sleep. The fly again refused the offer by speaking about the other flies who has accepted his offer and disappeared. In this stanza too, the spider tries a different tactic, offering the fly a pretty and comfortable place to sleep. Again, the fly refuses, citing the disappearance of others who accepted this offer. Now we can go to the third stanza. Said the cunning spider to the fly, Dear friend, what shall I do? To prove the warm affection I've always felt for you. I have within my pantry good store of all that's nice. I'm sure you are very welcome. Will you please to take a slice? Oh no, no, said the little fly. Kind sir, that cannot be. I've heard what's in your pantry and I do not wish to see. Said the cunning spider to the fly, Dear friend, what shall I do to prove the warm affection I've always felt for you? 
In this stanza, he again tries to deceive the fly by talking in a different manner. Here the spider makes the fly feel guilty for constantly returning or refusing his invitation and failing to reciprocate or respond to his love for him. In the first two lines of this stanza, the spider says that he does not know how to prove his love and affection for the fly that he always feels for the fly. He says that he loves the fly so much and he does not know how to prove it. I have within my pantry good store of all that's nice. You see the pantry children? See there are many good things. I am sure you are very welcome. Will you please to take a slide? He further tempts the fly with the desire for food and the sense of taste. He says that he has a good pantry with great storage of food and welcoming the fly to take a slice or taste of the food. We'll go to the last two legs. Oh no no said the little fly. Kind sir that cannot be. I've heard what's in your pantry and I do not wish to see. In the last two lines of this stanza, the fly gives its reply to the spider. The fly firmly and politely refuses the offer by saying that he has heard what is in his pantry. And he says he does not want to see what is there in his pantry. Once again, the fly refused the offer. In stanza 3, the spider asks what it can do to prove its motives are pure. It offers lovely food to the fly. But once again, the fly refuses saying it has heard about the spider's pantry entrusted. Now, we have seen the three stanzas of this poem. Now, we can see the consoli consolidation. Okay, children. See, parlor. In the first stanza, the spider is offering the parlor. And it is telling there are many curious things to say in the parlor. If he comes to his parlor, he can see many curious things. In the second stanza, he is feeling, he is more concerned about the fly. He is telling the fly is so tired. You are so tired. So come to my house. Come to my uh, web. I will give you a small bed. The bed, you can rest upon it. The bed is surrounded with beautiful curtains. They are thin and fine. The sheets are very thin and fine. In the third stanza, he is offering the pantry. In the pantry, there are delicious food and drinks for him. If he comes into the pantry, he can taste the delicious food which he is having. Now we will see the rhyme scheme. Children, already you have learnt about the rhyming words. I know, I think you know about the rhyming words. Now we are going to see the rhyme scheme of the first stanza. Will you walk into my parlour, said the spider to the fly. See the last word of the first line is fly. So you mark it A. Now come to the next line. See the last word, it is pi. See it is rhyming with the fly. So you mark the same A. Now come to the third line. The last word is star. So star is not rhyming with fly or spy. So now mark it B. Come to the fourth line. Fourth line, the last word is the. This that is rhyming with star. So now you write the same B. Come to the fifth line. The last word is vain. Vain is not rhyming with fly or star. So now you mark it C. Come to the last line. See the last word of the last line. It is again. This again is rhyming with vain. So 
what's the well, you mark it as C. Now, what's the rhyming rhyme scheme? The rhyme scheme is A A B B C C. Now we'll go to the figure of speech in this poem. Repetition. Repetition is the repeated appearance of words or phrases. In this, no, no, never, never. These words are repeated to emphasize on the fly's firm dedication to not to enter the spider's web. Children, uh, now we can go for a small comprehensive test. The way into my parlor is up a winding stair, And I have many curious things to show when you are there. How to reach the spider's parlor? Children, I think you remember the picture. It was a winding star. So, through the winding star, the spider's parlor can be reached. What will the fly get to see in the parlor? What can the, parlor, what can the fly see in the parlor? If he goes to the parlor, he can see, yeah, this curious things. Oh, no, no, said the little fly. Kind sir, that cannot be. I've heard what's in your pantry and I do not wish to see. Is the fly willing to enter the spider's pantry? Is the fly willing children? On the three stanzas, all the remember, the, uh, recollect all the, all the last two lines. Ah, yeah, the fly is not willing to enter the spider's pantry. Can you guess what was in the pantry? Now children, it is given to your own imagination. The fly told, I know what is in your pantry. Can you guess and find out what was inside the spider's pantry? Yes, dead insects were inside the spider's pantry. Dear children, thank you for being with me in this session. We continue the rest of the poem in the next session. And we also get the summary of the whole poem, its theme of the poem. And the next session as a continuity of this poem. Before coming for the next session, go through what you have learned today. Keep a paper and a notebook and your text with you in the next session. Thank you children. Meet you in the next session.